London Inspire programme has been a real opportunity to restart conversations that have been out there since, well, back before the pandemic. But now we have a, a new energy and a new commitment to make things happen. No more talk, now it's about action. Really excited to be here as race inequalities. It's such an important thing at the moment. We all need to really sit up, take action, take note, and look and see what we can do to support our black Londoners in terms of race equity and really improve that. So I'm looking forward to today. Happy to be here. I'm excited for it. My expectations today is to have uh, solutions, way forward, not just talk shop. Let's see. To have clear solutions where we go from here in addressing inequality. I'm very inspired to be there and would like to join all the discussions and the forum. Thank you very much. Um, come today just to kind of learn more about what we can do to reduce health inequalities for Londoners. When we know better, we must do better. Some of these statistics are really very striking for maternity, for cardiovascular, for cancer. London Inspire is such an important program because it brings communities together to focus on the things that matter to them and that the health and care service must engage with in order to help to reduce inequalities. It ensures that communities are informed, empowered and engaged, but also connected to the health and care system whether it's primary care, secondary care, or uh, prevention and population health. The partnership with INSPIRE is going to be critical because it is in that communication and that mobilization that we help to build trust and confidence in health services, that our services are able to develop more culturally competent approaches to improving health, and that we're able to develop data and ways of monitoring the impact of the work that we're doing. Complaint for change, and that's where we just want to see so much more collaboration, so much more partnerships and as people say you can't do it on your own so it's very very much about how we collectively come together to change those outcomes that we're actually seeing because we, we are the change. We're in this together but I know how important it is just being part of the patient involvement panel of, of the, the CVD group. So I think for me as the Vice Chair for Professional Development for Royal College of GPs what we've been looking at is increasing our awareness of who is actually out there. And I've, I've been overwhelmed by the number of organisations represented today and the work that they're doing within their respective communities, which frankly, we, it's not even on our radar. Um, so I'm slightly embarrassed by that, but now that I'm here, I, as Kevin Benton said, once you know better, we do better. So my remit today is to do better in terms of not just being aware of who's out there, but how we can get our GPs involved in each of those spheres to try and make black health better for London. the health inequalities that exist for uh, black communities across London, across the UK as a whole. The role of the NHS Race and Health Observatory is to work with our communities in order to tackle the causes of the causes of those inequalities. So we need to work in collaboration with our communities to co-produce the solutions that we need. I'll start by saying thank you so much to you all for the work that you're doing in your own spaces. I'm very mindful that not everyone necessarily gets a stage, but I do believe that actually the progress that we're making is not necessarily because of those of us who get to be on the stage, but many of you who nevertheless continue to push forward. A huge thanks to the Caribbean and African Health Network and all the organizations that have come together to make today a reality. My commitment is continuing to use my voice um, to call for further action on narrowing the health inequalities gap as it affects people of black origin and heritage and to continue to call the rest of the system to action 
and for each person to pivot from rhetoric to reality. Make sure that you are out there making a noise. Because if you're not going to make a noise, things will stay the same for the next 43 years. And somebody said there's all these lovely young people here and I'm seeing them and it's fantastic and wonderful. People like you guys have to take the baton and run with it. So the pledge that you need to make is actually get out there and keep pushing that agenda so that we break down the doors and the barriers and get to where we deserve to be. Thank you. Thank you. And my strong view is that in training in medicine, there is not enough inclusion of communities who need to be represented. And our medical school is going to be about that in terms of ensuring that that happens with the assistance of Faye and Charles and colleagues to get students to get into communities and achieve potential so that individuals can recognise that they can enter a medical school of our nature. They can then develop their own skills and expertise so they can stretch out to communities. But more importantly as well, to train doctors who are alongside them to understand the subtleties and importance of the different patient needs from different communities and different groups. And so this is a medical school that's about social justice. It's probably the first medical school for social justice in the country, and that's vastly important to me. It's been a theme right through today, and of course equality is so important um, to ensure that there are uh, open, accessible, fair standards. We have universal approaches inside public services, and we are a public service too as a uh, as a National Lottery Community Fund. But when we were doing our strategy and when we were listening to, to people and talking about our own experience uh, and people's experience of us as a, as a funder, it demanded something more than a focus only on, on equality. And we, we looked across more than 400 government departments, agencies, public bodies. How many of those more than 400 organisations are talking about equity rather than just equality? We, we found one organisation, and that was uh, NHS England. Uh, our comms and um, support to enable them to reframe, tell their stories, speak about the issues in a way that can be understood by other people because, you know, that's always another easy, easy, easy excuse that, like, we don't actually understand what's going on and what communities experience. So, yeah, we, I think we absolutely have a role beyond just funding. And I want to remind us that we need to be people of hope. The confident that something good is going to happen. We are not to leave here feeling depressed or anxious, but we need to leave here with hope saying something good is going to happen. Thank you all. You've been a fantastic audience. I can't tell you how, you know, anxious some of my team members were, but you made a real difference because you're still here, you're still standing, but massive thanks. So please put your hands together for yourselves. Thank you. I just want to encourage you to follow London Inspire. You know, like Reverend Les said, we've got to spread the word. This is long term, you know, so follow London Inspire, social media bars are down there, go on the website, it's meant to be a resource hub. This is all about collaboration, no one can go alone. And that is why I'm absolutely delighted we have funders in the room and we told them, let's start a conversation about how we invest for the long term. So what are we going to do better and what are we going to do to ch change the status quo and the current inequalities? So I think for me that's a really big message. Um, I think Reverend Les, the hope message, I think there's nothing without hope so I think that's really important. Boom.